In this video I will teach you how to make a advanced sword system with sounds and visual effects and this is a part 1 in the part 2 we will be covering a blocking system and more animations so if you'd like to see that make sure to subscribe. Ok so let's start from creating the sword. So for this tutorial I will make something really simple it doesn't need to look pretty. Ok so here it is and let's just make it slightly larger so it actually makes sense for this handle. Ok, so now that you have your sword, and depends if you want to use custom hitboxes or just the physical parts. So if you want uh, each weapon to have a hitbox, you can just like make a big hitbox, uh, put transparency to one, and then switch the variable for the blade in the script. But for me, I will just use the actual physical blade. So let's all cut this and insert a tool and then paste it inside and one key thing is to make sure none of these parts are anchored and you can also do can collide set to false so it doesn't get stuck on any parts in your game or something like that and now what you're gonna do is get yourself a welding plugin so we don't need to manually weld so select all of these and then click weld all and you can find that plugin inside the toolbox at the plugins if you search weld i think it's this one the third one and now i will rename this tool into a sword and then take the part that you want the player to hold it by and let's rename this into handle and actually i will just change the handle to fabric and make it a bit darker and now another plugin i will be using is tool grip editor you can find it again in the toolbox if you search tool grip but i'm pretty sure this one costs but not much when i bought it it was like maybe 20 robux or something like that but i'm sure you can find a free one here that works good as well so now i will open this plugin and click on edit tool grip and here we can edit how the player is holding it okay that's good okay so now that we have that uh, you can cut this tool uh, insert a rig if you don't have one you can go to the avatar and then rig builder and then depending on which characters your game use you can select r15 or r6 to animate it and click on the block avatar and after that you can paste it inside of the rig and now it's time to actually animate it so select the rig and once you're inside the animator you can rename this into sword idle so first we'll create an idle animation So mine would look something like this, so he is holding it back and if you want you can create something else. Make sure to uh, toggle looping animation and you can set the priority to action and after that go ahead and publish it. If your game is on the group uh, you can select something else than me here, so select your group if you want. And then you can save it and copy this ID. Now you can close the animator, uh, go back at the sword tool insert a folder and we'll rename this animations and insert the animation and rename it into idle and then paste the id we had in here and now we need to go back into the animator and save this animation if we already haven't and you can turn off the loop and the priority can stay the same but now we will actually create a hitting animation So I do recommend uh, that you make something prettier than this, I'm not a big of an animator and this is just for the tutorial so this doesn't need to look pretty for me. And now what you can do is go to the first point where the sword is hitting something and right click and add animation event here. And you can call this just hit, the parameter is optional, you don't need to put anything here. And then save it and rename this animation into sword hit and then we'll go ahead and save as and click save after that we can publish it again copy the id get to the sword again insert another animation rename this one into hit and then paste the animation id inside now what we will do is add a local script i'll rename it into sword client and first we will get the tool and then the animations And then we can do tool.equipped connect function and actually before that we should get a player and humanoid and let's just uh, copy this at the top and i will do find for child which is a and then do humanoid in case you have your uh, humanoids renamed and down here we can do local track or actually 
idle track, just so we don't get it confused. Humanoid load animation, idle anim, and then idle track play. Or actually, let's load it before that, so we can actually manipulate it. So then tool.unequipped connect function, idle track, stop. And let's just add a check if idle track not is playing then and then cut this and copy it inside so now if the idle track is actually playing you stop it which of course it is playing if you have this equipped but just in case and now we can do tool dot activated connect function and now we'll go back here at the top and make another variable hit track humanoid load animation and then hit anim and actually before continuing on this tool.activated let's create another function so hit track and then a colon get marker reach signal and in here put how you name your animation event and then we'll do colon connect function and also let's just add a debounce And let's just pick out a sound. Okay, so I know you can't hear this, but I think this sound is okay. You can add it into a handle or maybe even rather uh, rename this into blade and add it in there. And I will just rename it sound. So find yourself a nice hitting sound. And then make a, I don't know, we can do it here. Local hit sound equals tool.blade.sound so now when the animation reaches the animation event then we can play this so i think this is much easier than using task.wait and waiting for like 0.2 seconds uh, when the animation reaches that hitting point or something like that and one more thing we should have probably added is a remote event so let's call this uh, hit re and then up here we can get it local hit re equals to not hit re so this will be so we can deal damage to the players so down here uh, tool dot activated hit track play or actually let's do if uh, not debounce then hit track play so we actually use this debounce we have created and then we can set debounce equals true Okay, so we haven't made a variable for blade yet, so local blade equals tool.blade and we can even switch it out uh, here. So then blade.touched connect function inside a put hit and then local, uh, what can we do, enemy equals hit.parent and then we can do hit re fire server enemy. So we are sending uh, the enemy we hit from the local script to the server script we will create in a bit. And then you can do test.wait maybe 0.5 or 1 second something like that. Debounce equals false. And just so we can test this before let's do print hit and then do dot, dot enemy dot name. So let's see if this actually works. Uh, get the sword and insert it inside of the starter pack. Okay, so we have our idle animation and when I hit it seems like kind of weird and I actually figured out why that is because we haven't stopped this idle track so let's do idle track and then stop and now after this we can probably play it again. Okay, and as you can see now it works properly, it extends the hand fully as it is but seems that we are getting kind of a lot of hits uh, with only one hit at the printing so it's good that I made that so now let's go ahead and fix that okay so what I'm thinking after this debounce let's add can hit equals true and down here we can do if can hit equals true then uh, let's just copy all of this paste it here or actually cut it not copy it and then can hit equals false and down here we can do again can hit equals true okay so that seems to be fixing it as you can see now we are not getting like 20 hits from only one only thing i'm kind of concerned about is why it's moving like this because we don't have collision on 
at least I think we don't. Let's just check that. Oh, okay, so seems video, I'm not sure. I was pretty sure I turned it off, but whatever, I guess. So turn off the collision for all the parts. And now it works, so now let's actually do the damaging script. So inside the sword, insert a server script, and then do, um, we can rename it sword server. And let's just copy uh, this, copy it in here. And then hit re dot on server event connect function and here we need to get the player and then uh, i think enemy was it enemy yeah okay so it was the enemy rig so then enemy find first child which is a humanoid and let's make that a variable humanoid equals so then humanoid take damage and now we should probably create like a number value for the damage so let's do that so this will be damage of our sword uh we can put it i don't know let's do 25 now we need to get it here so damage equals tool dot damage dot value and then we just do damage okay or you can put it inside of the script if you think that's easier for me, I think it's better to put it as a value so you don't need to enter in every script and then change it. Okay, and as you can see, the rig is taking 25 damage and after 4 hits, it dies. But now this seems quite boring, so let's add some effects. Okay, so I found a bunch of uh, like hitting and blood effects here. So now what we will do is, uh, for example, take these. So take all of these effects from uh, one part, we'll cut them and paste them inside of the blade and go to rate and we'll set rate to zero for now and now go back into the local script and here we can do a for loop so effect in pairs and then we can do blade get children we could do if effect is or actually wait i forgot to put an if statement is a particle emitter then effect emit and this is how many times you want it to emit so i will just put one for now and this is kind of how it looks so it has like some sparkles and a circle around it something like that nothing too special but it does kind of look uh, more cool when hitting stuff and now for these like blood particles what we can do is insert a folder into replicated storage call it effects or maybe damage effects more specific get all of these so all of the damage effects that you found paste it inside and now we can go to the server script and here we need to first find uh, damage effects damage effects and then we should probably actually make that a function and i will just call that function here insert an enemy inside and then actually we need to get torso and if you're using r15 system you will want to change this to upper torso and then we can do for underline comma effect in pairs damage effects get children do effect uh, clone or actually let's make that a variable too so local clone equals effect clone clone dot parent equals uh, torso and then clone emit and we can do one so this time obviously we didn't uh, make a check if it's a particle emitter because we are assuming that only things you will add in here will be the particle emitters oh and one thing we obviously forgot to put a rate on these so select them all put a rate actually not one but zero Okay, so as you can see, we get the particles on our blade and on the rig. Maybe put a bit more than one. Let's go for maybe five. And I will also add more rigs. Okay, so that now looks a bit better. So if you enjoyed this video and want a part two, well, I will add animations to these rigs when they are hit and also make a blocking system. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and thanks for watching.